Hello lovelies, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, this one is for the sweater nails, I like the jumper effect and um, I'm just going to jump right in. So I've pre-prepped this tip with um, a grey gel polish and the grey I'm using is Thunder by Wow Bao. Um, I've added a matte top coat on top of the gel polish. Um, before you do any designs I would suggest that you either shiny top coat or matte top coat um, because these designs aren't going to be sealed in with another layer of top coat so um, make sure you seal them in. I was just showing you that you can do these designs with a brush, a dotting tool, a silicone tool, pointed one or whatever you've got really. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is literally just like the process of how you get this effect and I'm just starting off with some blobs or balls or um, circles or whatever you want to call them and I'm using the dotting tool because I find that using a dotting tool for round blobs or balls or whatever you like um, is actually easier than a brush. Um, it's easier to get that more circular shape and I, I can see that I've done these a bit on the wonk but really it's just to show you the technique more than anything else. I'm just sort of faffing around evening those up. So we're literally just putting the gel polish on top remember that underneath you've already sealed so with the gel polish and then the matte top coat your nail is finished and then the design just pops on top of that you don't want to do this on top of a gel polish that hasn't been sealed with a top coat because it's not going to work we're not sealing anything else from here on in there is no more top coat to be spoken of if you like so I've just done large dots down the middle as a design and then at the same height slightly smaller balls or blobs or round circles or whatever um, at the outer edges so they're just in lines but slightly different sizes just to show you that now don't cure that we want that gel polish to be wet we're gonna take clear acrylic powder this is my training tub um, I, own, I don't use this clear on clients, um, this pot of clear on clients at all. This is just for um, training demos and um, videos, that sort of thing. If you're going to do this on a client, um, I would recommend that you have a separate pot or that you do it over a tray and that you only use that stuff or you don't put it back in your main pot. That's just to stop cross-contamination and any nasties or fluff or bits or whatever getting back in the pot. So the blobs or balls or whatever of gel polish were completely wet. They were not cured, they weren't flash cured, nothing at all. They were totally wet. And we're going to sprinkle over with a little scoop, and I'm using the end of a cuticle pusher, just sprinkling over the clear acrylic. And it does need to be clear. Um, if you use coloured acrylic, you do stand the chance that when you go to cure this in the lamp shortly, that it won't be able to work through the pigment of the acrylic colour and it won't cure the gel properly which means that you have undercured gel on the nail which is not ideal and that's not what we want so you must only use clear as far as I'm concerned if you see another way to do it then that's that's on that tutorial my tutorial is clear acrylic so this is still wet if you were to touch those at that point they would still be wet so put that in the lamp for a full cure and they will be completely hard. Now, if you dust that off with a dusty, dusty, dusty brush, um, and I love this fluffy brush from Wow Bow, it's really cool, they will be totally solid. I'm going to have a little feel of those. They look a bit like Lego at the minute, but they are totally solid. The clear acrylic sets in. Now, usually that gel would have a tacky layer. That acrylic, the clear acrylic that you sprinkled on, not only gives it that sort of matte effect but it also sinks into the gel and stops there being a tacky layer so there is nothing to wipe off there's no residue nothing else at all um i'm going back into this design using the smaller end of the dotting tool just to put some smaller balls in between um on the diagonal just to give it a bit more of a pattern and then after that point 
I'm going to sprinkle on some more clear acrylic and you can do this in any amount of stages that you like. You can do like three blobs and then sprinkle and cure, wipe off the excess, go back in, do another three blobs. If you don't want to do a huge amount of design all in one go, you don't have to. And that's that's the real beauty of this design as well. Make sure in between putting more on or when you're finished, you do take all that excess off with a fluffy brush because if you have a bit of acrylic powder on top and then you're trying to add gel onto it, it's not going to adhere properly and you're going to have all sorts of problems. So trust me, I've made these mistakes and I do these tutorials in good faith that I have made these mistakes. So I'm just putting that up against my nail there so you can have a look and that would be quite a cute design if you do it on blue with white or whatever they might look like little snowballs it's quite sweet really i like that and it's great to start off just testing the medium so this one i've used uh, another gel polish called gamble um it's a really lovely like deep berry color it's actually a bit darker in real life look at this for editing skills that <laughs> I think I do that again in the video as well because I'm a bit special. I got all excited about it. Um, I've been watching too much TikTok. So um, I'm using this gamble colour which is a bit darker in real life than it is on the videos because I have such a lot of lighting in my videos to try and give you the best view. Um, <clears throat> now in hindsight I kind of wish that I had done this in a different colour so you could see it better. So this is like the running pattern that is really popular and it's it's a zigzag but it's a, a two vertical lines joined by a horizontal and I'm going to run that down the middle of the nail so if you do the vertical lines below each other so that one's below that one and I'm going to do the other vertical one below the other but stepped and then you just join them up with a horizontal line there you go. So it's kind of like um, part of a H, if you if you imagine what a capital H looks like, and then you've taken away parts of it. So I find it easier just to do the, the vertical lines, the downward lines, if you like, and then do the cross, the across line and the horizontal line um, afterwards. And you can see how they start to interlock um, they don't really interlock because they don't touch each other um, but that's how the pattern is made and sometimes it's it's good to draw that out on paper with a pen first before you go onto the nail to do it because what I've had feedback wise is a lot of people look at this and look think god that looks really complex and really complicated and actually it's really not complex and complicated at all but I can see if you're new to nail art or if you're not very confident with nail art how that could look quite complicated um, so yeah just to maybe have a go pen and paper first and you know if you tip that to the side they're basically like little S's but with straight lines rather than curves um, whatever you need to make sense of it really I find that the two lines going downwards and then meeting them in the middle is the easiest way but really it it's personal preference I'm just showing you some designs on a tutorial and you can decide how you want to do it there's not really a right and wrong way of doing these and it's mostly about having fun with it and figuring it out deciding how you want to do it so again we're going back to sprinkly sprinkly remember not to touch the nail with the pusher because that gel is still wet so you will smudge it you'll move it and then it will set like that and that's not what we want it at all so now you've got your line of zigzags you see if i put it sideways it kind of looks like a, an s or a z or whatever take off your excess always and there's going to be a lot of repetition in this video because it's basically just designs with the same method. But what I wanted to do was show you how these designs end up looking 
on a shiny background so the way that i've prepped this nail is i've given it a coat of um gamble which is the color i'm using i didn't need to do two coats because this is a really um pigmented color and then i just put a layer of the shiny top coat the wow bow diamond shine no wipe top coat on top and then I've just gone for the design straight away. So adding on to this design, I'm going for some lines just to add a little bit of extra because they're supposed to be like sweater nails, jumper nails, whatever. And then I've gone for some dots along the edge as well. Make sure that you cover everything in acrylic, tap, above the nail not on the nail so if it's client's finger you can use your finger to tap their finger above the nail just to take the excess off and that does help just to get the extra extra bits off so that you know it's definitely going to cure then give that a little dusty dust a little dusty dusty and that's it that's another design obviously you can switch these designs up however you like really and uh, you could do it across the nail or across the top of the nail or whatever you like but it's just another one to show you so this one I have prepped the nail again and I've used which color mythology which is a lovely pink pale pink color and I've put matte top coat on this one again Look at this, my little like fancy editing. It's not fancy editing at all, it looks naff. <laughs> um, so this one is like the cable knit, or I think it's cable knit, I don't know. I'm not a knitter, couldn't tell you. So the, the easiest way I found to do this design is the way that I'm showing you. So whichever section of the nail you want to have this knit design, Go all the way down the nail from top to bottom with little diagonal strokes. And you don't even need to really pull it as such. You can push the brush slightly down to make that sort of little flat design. And you don't need the, the gel polish to be really um, thick or blobby or anything like that because the more you put on there, the weight of the powder will push it flat and it will flare out and it will join up and stuff. So, you know, you don't have to put loads on there. It's just enough for it to grab the powder. So I've cured that row and taken the excess off. I'm going back into mythology and between those downward strokes, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. So you start between the two and just do exactly the same but in the opposite diagonal direction and work all the way down the nail or down the section that you want to fill with this beautiful knitted design which makes me feel all cozy and comfy and it's that time of year isn't it where we all want to be in jumpers and be cozy and comfy so i've got i think i've got a little bit cocky here and instead of dusting and curing i've i've thought do you know what i'm going to do another line of this on the other side and the potential worry there is that if you smudge it you're going to take the whole design with you whereas if you cure sprinkle cure take off the thing in between each line potentially you're only going to ruin a line at a time whereas if you do the whole design and then you catch it in the lamp or with the um the little uh cuticle pusher that you're using to scoop the powder because i did that as well i think i did that on a live um i was sprinkling away getting all excited and um just caught the nail tip that i was doing and um smudged the whole design so yeah not ideal really um but there, you can see how that's starting to add up. So I'm just gonna add in the extra lines there, that side. And you can turn your client's hand around um, upside down if you like, but if you just turn them palm up and then make them put their hand fingers sort of curled over, 
you can get them upside down. And I tend to work on tips the way that I would be able to access a client's hand. So if you're turning your tips sideways and this, that and the other, and that's not a way that you would be able to turn your client's hand, you're doing yourself a bit of disservice. Um, your tips will look beautiful, but you're not actually going to be able to do that in practice. So that's another tip for you as well. Only manoeuvre the tip the way that you would be able to manoeuvre a hand if you want these skills transferable onto a client. So there you go. So giving that a little dust off and this is the finished product. There you go, it's dusty dust. I really like that one. It's really effective. It is quite quick once you get the hang of the ups and downs and working in between the other lines and stuff. Um, it is actually quite quick and you can alternate the rows of colour, which is also really cool. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is Moonlight, which is the palest of the sort of grey colours that Wow Bow do. And again, I've put a shiny top coat on this one. And I'm using, um, I don't know why I'm doing that. I think it's just to show you that it is shiny and we're going to make a band across this. Um, almost like a stocking, I guess. And since it is coming up to Christmas, because I've actually filmed this in November, um, since it is coming up to Christmas, this is a cute idea to use for a Christmas stocking or something like that. You could even use this as like a christening nails, I guess, for a little stocking or a baby reveal, like gender reveal. Um, a baby reveal, I think that's the pregnancy. I think people would know without nails, generally. Uh, I'll just, I'll go back to nails because... Clearly, that's not my forte in life. So anyway, I'm using the mythology because I had some left on my palette. and I don't like colours to go to waste. And I'm just painting that stripe in. And actually, you could just use the brush from the bottle to do a stripe like that or a strip or whatever. And then don't cure it and make it all dusty. Tap off the excess. Pop it in the lamp. Ripping. Come on, my editing skills are rubbish. Right, take off the excess. And what I like there is that you've got that little band of matte and the rest of the nails all shiny. I really like that. But I'm not gonna leave it there because, you know, let's just add some design onto it as well. So I'm going in with the liner gel paints in gold and this is out of the set and you do get nine colors in the set but that does include black and white and gold and silver and then um colors as well um this gold is really lush and what i should have done in hindsight and this is the great thing about playing and um you know just messing around what i should have done is left it gold like this cured it and then gone with a striper brush to put shiny top coat on it because that is really pretty gold and it looks lush. But what I did instead was put acrylic over it and cured it and it went kind of like a kind of yellow sort of gold matte kind of. And it, it I mean, it's all right, <laughs> but I like shiny stuff. So I was trying to keep it mad. I was trying to keep it, you know, keep it all within the keeping of the video, but whatever. So I'm going to I'm going to go in with like um, a diamond pattern and I'm just marking out where my shape is going to be. Um, working on top of that matte acrylic is actually pretty difficult because you won't get really crisp lines because you haven't got a really flat surface to work on. What you will end up with is sort of bled out lines. So although I'm showing you this technique, it's, um, it's fun to have a play, but probably not the best technique if you want to have some nice sharp line work. But it's just another thing that you can try and this is just layering layering up basically I don't know why I've left this in real time it's just me painting lines really 
it's just a bit of a cheat where you draw the the dots in and then you draw the long lines to make the diamond shapes cute and it's kind of um like a band around something like a sock this is <laughs> That sounds really flash, doesn't it? Welcome to my sock tutorial. So it's yeah. You want to learn how to how to paint sock nails? I don't know if that trend's going to take off. Who knows? Might do. And I've added some dots in the middle as well because why not? Got a bit carried away with myself there. Look, I'm going to pull the bottom of that diamond out just to make it a bit more pointy, and then I'm going to sugary sugary lovely beautiful job and then i'm gonna cure it and dust off the excess and i think i'm gonna leave it at that because i think i've messed about with it enough don't you yes i have right there you go it's something a bit different and it is another technique that you can use and um yeah there you go so here's the next one really pretty thing that i have started with and i have used this really really deep red which is called plummy um and put a matte top coat over it looks a bit wishy-washy towards the top but i've only put one layer of gel on because i'm cheap and then i've used metal which is a premium glitter gel polish and i've just marked out a heart with it cured it obviously and then top coated the heart so I'm using Twinkle Twinkle, which is a kind of deep, pinky, nudey, shimmery, pretty colour. And I'm also using the Plummy as well. Um, doing this um, design and effect with your background colour is quite popular with the sweater nails effect um, because then it just you know it doesn't look more like a jumper you you don't have um, a, a red jumper with rows of blue knit generally because the jumper is if the jumper's red then the rows of knit are red so <clears throat> I'm just talking total rubbish but generally speaking the sweater nails designs tend to be the same as a background colour. However, that doesn't um, always work well in a tutorial. As you'll see, these lines kind of disappear once you put acrylic on them and cure them and all the rest of it. Um, but really, like I said, there's really no rules to it at all. Um, my line work on this tutorial's shocking. I was really poorly when I filmed this. <laughs> and um, sort of on my deathbed, trying not to cough all over everything. Um, I wasn't on my deathbed at all. I've got man flu. <laughs> nothing, nothing serious. Um, so I've cured it. There you go. And I'm dusting it off. And there you go, they kind of disappear into the background in that one because it's a matte background and it's a matte top and it's all the same colour so down the middle I'm going to do some little hearts and I'm going to show you an easy way the way that I do easy hearts and I'm going to do two blobs of this colour side by side like that and then I'm going to pull them into a V shape pull, pull and then just flesh it out and that is it little heart, how cute is that? little dotting tool and I'll show you that again little blob another little blob next to it Pull it into a V shape. V, V. Flesh it out in the middle. Beaut. So I'm going to do, I think, another one of those. And then one at the top and then some dots. And actually that ends up looking quite cute. Although it could have been a bit neater. Oh, there's another one. I thought I had only done three. Bonus heart. There you go. Bonus. And I'm faffing. There you go. Surprise, surprise. Faff, faff. 
Not my finest work, not my finest hour, but you know, not bad for a free tutorial. Doop doop. Cute. Little heart, two little blobs. Pull it into a V. Gorgeous. Let's add a dot on the bottom and a dot on the top. Let's powder it up. See, I've the edge of that heart has gone onto the line and then that's bled out. So just watch your designs don't clash into each other because that is a bit of a pain if they do. So I am dusting that bad boy, giving him a cure. Ooh, I'm gonna give him a dust and that looks quite cute and I like the contrast of the shiny and matte and I like the different colors and I think if I'd done it better it would have looked better probably who can say and obviously with the top coat on the heart you get a little bit of a raised effect as well which is cute so using Twinkle Twinkle, which was the feature colour last time, as a base, we're going to go back to the Cable Knit one. I think that's what it's called. Do you know what? I keep saying it and I've got no idea. Somebody in the comments let me know. Right. So I've used grey and then for the next lines, I'm going to go into that pink, which is mythology. And then you just do the lines between the other lines and actually we've got some sort of right angle stuff going on here because it's going to be a little strip on the diagonal and then we're going to go back to the grey and I've left this in real time just so you can all watch me laboriously paint tiny dashes wipe your brush out Go back into the pink. Blub, blub, blub. Lovely, beautiful. And another one, another one. One more. Come on, there's a gap down the bottom there. I think um, I really like the pinks and greys because they kind of, they just remind me of, I don't know, it's quite homely, isn't it? Like maybe pyjamas or something. Those pale pinks, pale greys together. They're just a really nice sort of cosy combo, I guess. So I'm sprinkle sprinkling on those ones. And I'm popping that in the lamp and I'm dusting that off. And then I'm going to go into this pink on this side and do that sort of zigzaggy effect here you go down across and down but just on a smaller scale and I'm going to use that as a border I have actually gone all the way around a nail using that design before as well and it's it's a softer um it's a much softer design this time rather than really really harsh lines it's more of an s so it's a softer if you watch it's not so harsh with the line work it's much more of a curved S and that works as well as long as it interlocks like that it could easily be that pattern and make sure you go all the way to the edges which is what you've just seen me do there I'm gonna give that a sprinkle 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 sprinkly wink outside of full cure gonna dust that off and then that's just a stripe and you could literally just put that into whatever pattern you wanted just a little stripe across the top like um, a cuff or whatever and you could do it in whatever colors you wanted so there we go there we have it um i really hope you have enjoyed this tutorial i hope you've learned something from it these are the ones that i have just done for you so you can have a really good look at them um, if you want to see anything else, please do, as always, let me know. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.